The Raptors find their way and take game four against the Philadelphia 76ers, 110-102. I'm Randy Urban and this is Raptors Nightcap. Tonight we're joined by Leo Routens, Jack Armstrong, and Sherman Hamilton. Sherm, we talked Pascal Siakam the last game. Wait, wait, wait a minute. No, hey. no, no. What? It's his birthday. Happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Happy birthday to you. I try, man. I try. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday dear Sherm. Oh, boy. Happy birthday to you. All right, now talk about Cheers. Pascal Siakam. Happy birthday, Sherm. Come on, please. All right, go ahead, Pascal go. Siakam. Go ahead. He played hey, good. Hey, you know it's a big day because I got sushi, so it must be your birthday. You brother. know what? I wasn't going to say welcome. anything. I, I promise. Not till the end of the show. Well, you started it before the show. That's true. That's true. I mean, let's be real. Pascal Siakam, great player. But yeah, Sherman sure. Hamilton, it's his birthday. Yeah, he that gets is some a love. Higher <laughs> level discussion. Sherman, sure. uh, Pascal, pl- a career, off, career playoff high, 34 points, eight rebounds, five assists, 15 in the fourth quarter. What I liked is he wanted the ball. Make or miss, he was taking the shot. Yeah, and I could argue in game three he wanted the ball. He just wasn't making shots. I like the way the Raptors moved him around in the fourth quarter. I mean, in game three, Second half and overtime, it was straight down the middle. Everything was straight on. They moved him around, little side screen and roll with him and Precious so he could change the angle of attack. And then it allowed him to get to the free throw line. He was 9 of 11 in that fourth quarter. Hey! Here we go! It's because because I love you. 30 again. But I feel like it was a setup. Uh, I got to take I a, got a little out. bird that right, told me. Jack, go lean in there with the birthday guy. There we, we go. Rock star quotes here. Nice. There we go. Awesome, my man. Live right. television. Thank you very much. Birthday. Appreciate it. Live TV. This is yeah. great. Awesome. Awesome. Next, Thank you. <laughs> hey, come on. Sing it at home. Come on. Sing it at home. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Made it through the whole oh, broadcast. Oh, yeah. right, you got to make a wish. Go ahead. Uh, don't make me make a wish now. <laughs> all right. Thank you. He makes a wish you all die. Okay. All right. You're, are you finished what you were saying? I, don't, I, I think can't. I am. <laughs> I think it's over. <laughs> Could I ask a, a legitimate question? Yes. I, I mentioned it to Leo before, but I'd like to get everyone's opinion. The NBA is so switch happy. If I'm Gordon Pascal Siakam, why would I ever switch uh, Georgie Jiang on him? Because he can't go with him. Yeah. So, like, wouldn't I, like, say, Pascal, you stay out there and you shoot a three, but I'm going to always make sure I go under the screen and I'm going to get my best defender on him because the Raptors just hunted down well, matchups all day. Jack, to your point, what's Philly doing? They're saying go ahead, shoot threes, right? So you, you're not going to get hurt if you go under screens on Pascal because you want him to shoot threes. Mm-hmm. So why do you have to switch? It makes no sense. Right. But now the Raptors love switching because they've got same size guys. They can switch all over the place. And they're quicker and they don't have guys you can hide. They don't have to hide anybody. Yeah. Philly's got to hide guys. Yeah, Raptors it doesn't make don't any have sense. to hide any. It doesn't make sense to me. This what? felt like. But it's okay for the Raptors. Yeah. This felt like what everybody was expecting, right? This was the game. This was Raptors basketball today. Yeah, when you think about the consistency all season long, they were very good on the offensive glass all season long. They were very good in transition. And they were excellent at turning teams over and scoring off the turnovers. They turned Philly over 16 times, scored 22 points off those turnovers. They had 21 fast break points. Mm -hmm. They had 12 or 13 offensive rebounds. Those are the tenets of Raptors success all season long. And this is the first game that they actually held Philly to under 50%. So we're seeing the pieces that make the Raptors successful. Birthday guys got numbers. Well, I'm I'm at a big number right now, so I got a lot of numbers. (laughs) But uh, those numbers, those pieces are what made the Raptors successful. We didn't see the collective of all those elements through games one and three at the same time. At points we saw it, but it wasn't all there. This was the first time we've seen all those elements come together, and they were actually the team we're used to seeing. Speaking of numbers, there's no sushi left. The show is uh, three minutes old. Right. Uh, <laughs> I, no I thought on my birthday I get gifts. I give him sushi and he kills it. Um, I have fruit for you, though. Le- Leo, oh, thanks. You're getting old. You need to eat your fruit. Leo, we talked a lot about the regular dress about, about comfort level. How did the Raptors take Philly out of their comfort zone? Well, it, like Sherm says, you get to the offensive glass. You're aggressive. You're switching, getting into people. They were very physical, right? Because it wasn't just, you know, Embiid that struggled. And Tobias Harris was not the Tobias Harris we've seen. Maxi wasn't the Maxi we've seen. So this is the way they have to play. And, you know, Jack, like you just said, we were talking earlier that you can't, you can't change your rhythm during a game, right? You saw some of, the, some of the other games you're playing, you're passive, you're aggressive, you're passive. That's how you get the whistle against you. 
When you're aggressive all game long, the whistle comes your way, right? And the whistle was, came the Raptors' way because they played a certain style all game long. And they have to be that team. That's what they – and going into Philly, you can't, you can't let Philly come out and punch you yeah. and, and try to punch back. You got to be the aggressor. This e- this series could easily be two. Well, that's two. I was just probably should say. be yeah. two yep. two right yeah. now. I, I was watching that game, going, "This is not a team that's down three nothing." Yeah, but, but but put it in perspective, Fred Fred wasn't a big factor in Game Three. Neither was Pascal, right? Fred wasn't in Game Four, and Raptors could have won, should have won last game, win this game, without their All Star point guard, mm-hmm. which tells you how really this team's e- these games are evenly matched except for that one big guy in the middle for Philly, and the Raptors negated him. Well, he was super frustrated today, Jack. Probably the most frustrated we've seen him in, in a long time. What were the Raptors doing to kind of create that level of well, I angst? Think, I think to Leo's point and Sherm's point, I mean, I just think they came out and they, they were just and, – and, you know, I agree. The referee uh, – the, the whistle was very good for the Raptors today, but they earned the whistle. They really did earn the whistle. and. and I think they confused Embiid a few times on coverages, like where the double was coming from. He would throw the ball to the next pass on a diagonal, and there'd be a guy there waiting to pick it off. Then he started figuring it out, but he didn't know where the the double was coming from. He didn't know where the, the interceptor was going to, you know, and he guessed wrong a few times. I just thought they played with great force. I'd say what Thaddeus Young was awesome awesome today on both ends his scoring his passing his rebounding his defense on on Embiid OG Ananobi when he got caught on Embiid really battled him and, and so pushed water. him pushed I love water pushed him off his mark so uh, no I hey look uh, they earned the win honestly you know I thought they were a much better team than Philly the other night as well yeah uh, I like where they're at I think they, their comfort level and confidence level going into Philly Monday night should be really good. I'm excited. I mean, I don't know what's going to happen with Fred Van Vliet, but no matter what, I feel good about where they're at. I will say this. They figured out Joel Embiid is a first option out of the double team guy. He sees the first pass out of the double team. It seems like he's been told That's great go point. cross court. Yeah. And they're saying we're going to double team him because he's such a rhythm player when it comes to the double team. He catches a ball, he turns and fires. He doesn't turn and look. Yeah. And they've been able to bait him into that cross court turn, that cross court pass, and they're picking it off. And he hasn't adjusted to it. So, you know, when you're talking about defending this guy, first of all, they're moving him further out, which is huge to help your defensive rotations. Then the other thing is, you know, he's automatic going one way. Mm-hmm. And now you can pick it off, and now you can frustrate him. And I tell you what, the Raptors, from an energy standpoint, threw the kitchen sink at him. And he wore down throughout this game. And yeah, I know his hand is bothering him. And there's nothing wrong with stripping down on the ball every now and then in his hand. It's a part of the play. Hey, Thaddeus Young got hurt stripping down on him. So I'm saying they went at him and they wore him down and they consistently frustrated him with the energy, got the benefit of the whistle, and they earned it. So now what do you do in game five? You do the same thing and make him respond to it. Uh, Scotty Barnes, a lot of good news coming out of Scotty Barnes. You know, rookie well, of the year, played tonight. Yeah, it was great, did. and the and the crowd was unbelievable because I think they really, uh, you know, his his personality, his energy, the enthusiasm he plays with. I mean, well earned, well deserved, making winning the rookie of the year. Uh, the crowd was amazing, and uh, I thought, you know, your, your offense. Oh, after a few days off, your offense always takes a little time. But he was dialed in on the glass. He was dialed in defensively. He was dialed in in terms of playmaking and his awareness of where he was in the offensive scheme. And I think he'll be even better uh, on Monday night. So yeah, it was watch great. His, you watch this guy. Here's a guy that sat a couple games, right? Why, why, he comes in. He's where he's supposed to be defensively. He's on this guy. He rotates. So that guy bumps on this guy. He wasn't just sitting there. He's going. He's, he, you could tell he studied everything that's been going on while he couldn't play. Mm-hmm. And like I said, you come in there, you're playing on a bum ankle, and you roll a little bit and when you get in there, you still get 11 rebounds. Yeah. And it just his presence out there, it just makes a difference. And I was going to mention that. I mean, usually guys understand that they can impact winning when they don't have their best stuff on a particular night. You don't have your shot going, you can't finish, you're not getting to the rim. How do you help a team win? Right. Usually guys struggle with that until they get later on in their career. Mm-hmm. He understands that now. He, was, he wasn't good from the field. He didn't shoot the ball well, didn't score a lot, but he has 11 rebounds, and to Leo's point, defensively, he's extremely active, in place, using his length and his athleticism. 
he is a, has a maturity level that I'm not quite understanding for a 20 year old, but it is so impressive to see how balanced he is and how composed he is in situations. The kids really, really got a high seal. Yeah, it's, un it's unbelievable. So tag, uh, guys, uh, you know, it just came to me while Sherman was chatting. And You're I'm welcome. <laughs> Happy birthday. I, I, I think I, I think guys have that. I just keep back, giving. You know? I think back to 2019 and kind of what what tipped the series a little bit. I'll never forget a Sunday afternoon, game four. They're down two one. Kawhi was absolutely magnificent, but they went big. And unfortunately, Fred Van Vliet got hurt today. But they played big today. They played bigger. Well, and even even though Gary Trent was having a good game, he sat for a, a while because they went big. Like, like the even when like Achua, excuse me, Achua, but like Boucher and Thad Young came in, they were great. They were awesome. The back cuts, but their size, their length. I think the fact that they played a little bigger, like a guy like Maxi, uh, a lot of those shots, it was a lot more length trying to test in the lane. A yeah, lot yeah, of yeah, yeah. It was just I don't know if it makes sense, but I, I just I'm looking at them. I, 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 I they're. I don't. I don't see if, if if Philadelphia advances. I don't see them beating Miami. They could beat Atlanta if Atlanta wins, but I don't see them beating Miami. And I don't think Philly's that much better than Toronto. I mean, I, I think it's a smidgen. Now, obviously, home court, they're front runners. They'll play better Monday. But I feel really good if the Raptors come out with force early, that it could be a heck of a game. Leo, do you feel the same way about Monday? How are your thoughts going into that? After, you know, with Fred being injured. Oh, he did that intentionally. <laughs> he doesn't want to talk. He doesn't want to talk to you. <laughs> he was so happy with me. That's spilling out his mouth. You been on TV before? Just curious. Oh, you're getting a lot you know, of you comments go to the, today. You know, you go to the, a Toronto Zoo and you, you know they tell you not to feed the animals, but <laughs> yeah, when the animal feeds himself, there's yeah. a problem. <laughs> you hey, ready? You know, when you put it here, what do you want me to do? So, so you look at the Raptors didn't play that well in the first two games in Philly, right? Just didn't play the well, and and their main two guys weren't what they we, we expect them to see. Two games at home, different story, but you still don't have your all-star point guard, and you're you're playing Philly even. Mm -hmm. So this is a team that you know again I don't, and I'm not saying this disrespectfully. I, I don't think Philly's a great team. I think they're a good team. Mm -hmm. uh, they have holes just like any other team does, can be exploited. Uh, and if the Raptors play with that same kind of energy on the road, they're going to have a great opportunity. And then, and then hopefully, hopefully you get the whistle or the whistle's Balanced fairly out. even yeah. if you're the aggressor. Mm -hmm. If you're not the aggressor, you're not going to get the whistle. You're going to get killed. All right? So that, that's, that's a, a big point that I'd be looking for in game five. Yeah, and the interesting thing, too, is because Tyrese Maxey and Tobias Harris, along with Joel Embiid, they played so well. James Harden's been able to kind of go under the radar Cruise. and not have to be that guy. Well, in a game like this, they needed him to be that guy. Yeah. The Raptors didn't let him off the mat. Mm -hmm. They not only took care of, of Embiid, they took care of Maxi. they slowed down Tobias Harris, but they didn't let James Harden get off the mat. And they tried to feature him late in the game yeah. to see if he could get some rhythm. So there's an understanding now that, you know, if you do the right things against the key guys, you're going to be able to potentially hold James Harden at bay, and now you've got a real chance of going into Philly and getting a win, which would be... It's not, it's not crazy, crazy right? It's right? not crazy? No. What kind of shots do the role guys get in Philly? And when I say role guys, I mean, it's hard to say Tobias Harris is a role guy at $200 million, but he's a role guy. So you look, at, you, look at, yeah, you look at Tobias Harris and Maxie and, and, and Danny Green, the shots they got in Philly were dramatically different than the shots they got here. And they had open looks. They were just you know, spotting up and firing, right? Jack, Can't let that happen. Jack, did you have a favorite play in, in the game that kind of that you felt like, okay, this is we're, we're in a good spot here. The Raptors are in a good spot. I thought when Harden went to the basket and Achua and I think it was Boucher met him at the rim and yeah. blocked the shot and they went the other way. Um, I just think, to Sherm's point about Harden, uh, I think the Raptors have figured out that like, hey, you know, that we respect him for his resume, but. We're gonna come get you. You bring it in there. We're not worried about the officials. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna bring our full force defensively on you, and uh, I like that. And, and attack I think, both of them at the other end. And right? I think he knows that. He knows that when he's going in there, 
he's looking around a little bit because it's a really long, quick, athletic team. And you mentioned something quickly, Leo. They're not letting any weak defender for Philly off the hook. No. If they've got that matchup with Harden, they're going at Harden. If they've got Niang on him, they're going at Niang. And they are attacking any of those guys and not allowing that that little bit of a break there on yeah. the defense. If you're Niang, you're just like, come on, like every time. But I say, you know what? But, but that, that, that's old school, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Hey, you look back at it historically, the old Celtics. If there was a guy that could be, they'd, they'd punish that guy. Yeah. Punish him. Yep. And, I mean, and I that's what you do. I mentioned it in game one. Like, I mean, every time you see the guy, you got to find a way, attack, yeah. attack and try to get. I guess to my point, and I, look, I mean, obviously Doc Rivers is a Hall of Fame coach. If I'm, if I'm on their end, I'm going, look, that guy's on the floor for me, for, my, for his offense. And my job as a coach is to hide him. And I don't think they're hiding him. Well, I they tried the zone. And the yeah, Raptors, they did. The zone, yeah, yeah but the first man, three man. games the zone work. Yeah. I thought tonight yeah. the Raptors beat that zone They up. did. They didn't allow them to pack it in and hide there. And to your point... Maybe Doc thought he could hide some defensive weaknesses yep. there, but the Raptors blew it up so quickly that they had to get out of it. You know, it's interesting you say that because when you look at the zone, when you add a Scotty Barnes and a Thad oh, Young, passing, who can both big pass guys, the ball yeah. in the middle, uh, they're playmaking bigs. Yeah. That had some great it's, passes. It's hard to zone. That's some great passes. He's, uh, Thad Young is a, just a, a, you know, like just a old soul that really knows how to play. It's like a, it's like a, a Randy Urban running the show here. That's you know? what you get. <laughs> Okay, What's I, no, I, I take it back. I, I, I don't know where that came from. I apologize. <laughs> that is not water. Leo, do you think that there's real pressure now on Philly going back home? <laughs> no, you're right. You're right. What? <laughs> is there real pressure now on Philly going back? There's always pressure because they're, they're, you, could, you could feel it when we were down there, right? You could feel the, the, the stress, the anxiety, uh, because yeah, the reality is their two main guys have not had postseason success. And Doc Rivers has taken some heat as of late, too. So, um, you know, the, the, you can feel the heat. So all the more reason that you want to be the aggressor and you want to keep that game close. I, I don't know if I want to necessarily have the lead all game because when you kind of relinquish a lead when a team makes a run on the road, crowd gets crazy. But just stay there. Stay there. And, uh, but, but keep putting the heat on with your aggression, and the, that, that pressure will grow in that game five. I, I think there's pressure on Philly. Yeah. Look. Joel Embiid's hand is an issue. And Doc it. even said it, you know, they got to take images on it. It's not a good injury. If he's not 100%, this is kind of who the wagon was hitched to this whole series. And he was phenomenal games one through three. The other side of it is, you know, Tyrese Maxey, I think he's going to be a great player. I really do. But as a young player, you go up and down. So now the pressure raises for him to, to be consistently good. We saw in a game like tonight, today, he went back to being a young player. Yeah. Can he do that? So there's pressure there. And then we talk about James Harden. Listen, when Philly loses, that's when the microscope goes back on James Harden. When they win, they talk about everything else, and James Harden can lay back. So the more that this turns into a series, if the Raptors are able to, is the more that James Harden is going to be talked about, discussed. Might he press it? Maybe. But I think there's pressure on Philly for those three reasons. And we know when you're up, you're up 3-0. And you have a team creeping back on you. And in Philly, there is no, there is no mercy if you let this, this series get interesting. That's a lot of pressure to deal with yeah. for Philly. Two things. Uh, Raptors won 48 games this year. They lose a dramatic, heartbreaking game three when, quite frankly, they were the better team. Um, it would, have been it would have been terrible to sit here today and have them swept because this season has been joyful, fun, beyond expectations, and it's just a really fun ride for everybody. It's just been a fun team. And so, yeah, you're going to lose a heartbreaker like, uh, like the other night, but to come back and, to, and win convincingly today uh, I think really helps them in terms of their headspace going to Philadelphia. Uh, no matter what happens. And, and I think you that's think, important. You think they can play with that sort of freedom, that nothing to lose yeah, type thing? Yeah, I think so. I think that really helps. Yeah. I, think, I think this was, as much as there's pressure on Philly, I thought there was a lot of pressure on Toronto sure. today. You lose, you go. You know, right. like, and you don't want to get swept. And this team is not a team that should be swept because there's so much soul and spirit that this group has 
that uh, to me, I walk out of here today like, you know, like, okay, you know, there's a lot to build with. No matter what happens Monday. And if they win Monday, oh my God, then you play you don't play till Thursday. But there's a lot of cool stuff to build with here that now that you got at least a win, um, you know, you don't have to deal with any right. emotional wreckage. Whatever happens, happens. Right. Hey, I, one of my pet peeves. Okay, we want to talk about Joel Stone. I don't want to talk about a stone. All right, because you know, Fred's banged up coming in with the knee. Now he's got a hip, something going on. Nobody's talking about Fred. That's an all-star point. No one guard. talked about Scotty Barnes. No one talked about Scotty Barnes. You know, you got you got Gary Trent Jr. was dying the first two games. Yeah, it was pathetic watching him. It was it was yeah. just watching him. I felt like I felt sick watching him, right? So you can look at a guy like Embiid and go, you know what, this is the playoffs, dude. Don't look at your hand every single time you come down the floor. You're a seven foot, two hundred and eighty pound dude. You can impact the game whether you make a shot or not. You could knock people around. You get offensive rebounds. You get defensive rebounds. You could you could be a beast on the floor without making a shot. So I don't want this. This I don't want you know this talking about that drives me nuts. Mm -hmm. I'm going old school here. Mm -hmm. You hurt, you play. Clearly, if you're not if you're not doing more injury, if you're not gonna you know career stuff, you you play. That's the way it is. But I, that's not the mentality of I this, know that. This but NBA guess what? Player. Guess what? You 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 make enough money, you can handle. Whatever hands. Buy a new hand. Or buy a new hand. <laughs> well, they can buy a lot of hands. Hey. I, I put four see the stump up. See people. See, see, see the way this thing goes. You play. You play through it. That's all there is to it. I put four up Close because up uh, I did a sports center hit yesterday with with, uh, with Leo and Kate, and the one thing I said we talked about today's game. What's that? Name drop. <laughs> well, you know, Leo and That's Kate, not fair to Sherman, sure the name birthday. Drop. Okay, no, no. okay you got to mention Brad Faye We're just all because. All <laughs> Brad Faye. I love Brad Faye. I love Randy. I love everybody. Oh, thanks. Uh, I, I love you too, I, I, I mentioned four. I, I love you too. And, and I, I said, uh, I said yesterday though, you know, there's a responsibility to do your best and try to win Game Four. And there's also a reason why. And we're learning this in the playoffs. Ben Capella, Luka Doncic, Chris Middleton, Devin Booker. You never know. You look at Kyle Lowry now going down last night. You look at Scotty Barnes going down. You look at Fred going down today. Who's to say in the first quarter on Monday night that a Joel Embiid and a James Harden goes down? You're there. You compete. You just never know. And as much as people with their little computers tell you that no one's ever come back to win. Shots fired. You don't know. You, that's why you play. Are you and, people with your computers? No, no, no. My point is, like, you just never, ever Are know. Are you suits? <laughs> you think Chicago right now? Yeah. Uh, you know, like, they're like, hey, man, we got a chance to win. And Milwaukee's really good, but they got a chance to win the series. Mm -hmm. I mean, doubt. I mean, look at Utah. I mean, and they. Pelicans. The Pelicans. You just don't know. You just know. You just hang in there for the fight, and you see what happens. And let's be honest. We've heard it many times. It's hard to close a team out. It is. It's not easy to close a team out. And, and I mean, my estimation on Philadelphia is, from a mentally tough perspective, they can be rattled from my perspective. And Raptors get another game. Guess what? From a mental fragility standpoint, it gets a bit shakier. If it ever gets to an even series, my money's on the Raptors oh, yeah. all day, every day, because I just think that Philadelphia will put themselves in a situation where mentally they can't get over the hump. But, you know, getting that last win to shut a team out is difficult. So they've got their work cut out for By the way, Toronto won both games in the regular season at Philly. At Philly. I mean, they lost games one and two. Maybe, maybe they're due. Yeah. Uh, real quick, I know this has been a great show, but I forgot to mention about Scotty Barnes. Obviously, he was rookie of the year. I mentioned that. But uh, Magic Johnson called, said that he looks a lot like himself. Um, which is what I've been saying for a while now. Oh, so he had to give himself <laughs> props, right? He couldn't just make a point. It's like, I've been saying I that. I don't know why he long. said that to me, though. Yeah. <laughs> Did I disagree with he, you? He no, no, he no, wants no. you to say, you're right, you're right. Oh, I won't even look at him then. <laughs> what did you think of that, though? Did you, do you well, see what he's saying? Well, yeah. I, I mean, mean we all see Drink it. out of your cup. You know what? You, you, you left me no tea. <laughs> like, <laughs> we, we've all, I think we've all seen that that awareness, that the vision, the multiple deliveries that Scotty Barnes in has in terms of making passes, left-handed, right-handed. No look. No looks, the, the bounce over the top. Like, he knows all the passing lanes, and he does it effortlessly. Mm -hmm. And uh, when, you know, an icon like Magic Johnson, who is 
one of the most masterful passers we've ever seen in this game. A great tweeter. When he says that he reminds him of himself, I ain't going to argue with that. Uh -huh. I, I mean, uh -huh. this guy is probably the greatest passer this game has ever but seen. Beyond passing, remember when the, six, uh, when the Lakers beat the Sixers. 42 points. 42 six. points Jump playing ball. center. Jump ball. Playing center. Without Kareem. Without Kareem. Playing center. Right and 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 what does Scotty do? He he'll play center. He'll play. He's bringing up the ball. He's playing center. He's playing forward. Doesn't make versatility. Yeah. yeah. Interestingly enough, I, and I cannot remember the publication that wrote the article, but uh, his coaches, high school and college, uh, always encouraged him to watch video of Magic Johnson. Yeah, I remember that because I think they, they envisioned him uh, having a lot of that. You know, and and to me, I agree with you. He has a lot of magic in him. He also has a lot of uh, a young Tracy McGrady here who could do a lot of different. Uh, tra and they're all different. He has a little bit of Scotty Pippen in him. Like when I watch him, I see kind of a blend of those three guys in him. If he could be anything like any of those three guys, where do I sign up? And and and, and he's a nice and, kid and who wrap it up. really, he really and competes. All, and he's the, he's the personality <laughs> of this team. Leo's got plans. I gotta go. Yeah. It's Saturday night. It's T.O. I know. He's got a flight to Philadelphia tomorrow morning. All right, what's, are you running go. the show or not? No, we'll stop you it. You have there. a social oh, life, Randy? Yeah, say, you gotta go. You, you gotta show. eat your sorbet, man. Oh, you're talking about my sorbet, and Leo's uh, closing the show on you. Next game for the Raptors. Who are you, man? Shut her down. Monday. Who are you? Hey, Monday, 8 p.m. Down. Eastern in Philadelphia. Raptors try to get Leo's it. Leo's like, blowing up Randy. Tell Randy. Shut up. Shut up. You gotta go. Good night.